Hey guys, welcome back to Critical Flick. Today I'll be reviewing Last Night in Soho. Last Night in Soho is a British film directed by Edgar Wright, who's one of my favorite directors. He's done some phenomenal films. Every single one of them is great, in my opinion, and this movie is definitely no exception. The movie revolves around Louise Turner, who's played by Thomas McKenzie, and she's moving from this small town to move into the Soho district of London because she wants to make it as a fashion designer. And one of the things that's really interesting about her is that she has this fascination with the 60s with everything crazy that happened during that time in that district i in my mind i think of like austin powers because he's an american it's like just, that's what i think of when i think of this time period but it captures that you know lively nightlife all the fashion and all the crazy nightclubs and everything happening during that time and she has this fascination with the music and the culture and as she arrives there, she ends up finding some mysterious things. When she first arrives at the Fashion School of London, she doesn't fit in. Everyone's very modern, as you would expect. It's kind of more of the Kardashian era. You think of these kind of preppy girls that are really rich. She's not really rich. She's coming from a more modest upbringing. So she decides she doesn't want to live on campus. They're just too much for her. She doesn't relate to them. So she ends up moving in with this older woman in this kind of run down area of town that used to be very lively. She starts to have these visions, these dreams of this girl named Sandy and her life and her growing up. She's played by Anya Taylor-Joy and it's, it's so well done the way they transition from the modern day and kind of mirror it into back in the 60s. She's having these dreams, she's having these real out-of-body experiences where she is this character, she is this person and she's seeing kind of the struggles that she went through and seeing the grimy underbelly of what seemed like this kind of glamorous time in history. And as the movie plays out, you see these things happen to Sandy. You see what's going on with her life and her experience as a performer. She becomes a prostitute. She's being more and more abused as her story moves along. And she wants to help her. She wants to reach out and find a way to help this person, even though it's all in these visions. Because as the movie goes along, these visions start to blend into reality. She's seeing places in the modern day that she's seeing in these visions, in these dreams, and she's piecing it together. It turns almost into a detective film as the movie moves along. Like I said, Edgar Wright's a fantastic director and film writer, and I think this movie may be one of his best movies. The way it's written, it's so interesting, because when I went into it, I thought maybe it was a horror movie, I thought maybe it was a comedy like I've seen before, but it's this blending of genres, and it's something that makes him really excellent as a filmmaker. I don't want to dive into the ending of the movie because I really want people to check this film out. I think that it kind of flew under the radar. It was very highly anticipated, and then the pandemic came. People didn't really check out as many movies. This movie kind of went by the wayside, and I don't think it deserves that. I think it's one of the best movies of the year, and I absolutely loved it. The performances are fantastic, but I will say, as you start out, you think it's one thing, and it keeps changing, and it keeps changing, and there's a big twist towards the end of the film. I personally really like the twist because it works in really well. It ties everything together in a really neat bow and it makes you lead in one direction. It goes to another direction. It's a really fun movie to watch, honestly. And it has some really intense horror elements that by the end of the movie, there's something different because you think that something's happening with this character. You think that Sandy is a certain way and you think things are happening to her and it shifts. There's this hard shift in the third act of the movie and I, I think it's excellent. It turns into like a psychological thriller by the end of it. But like I had mentioned earlier, when it goes to the 1960s, the set design is fantastic. The cinematography is very interesting because like I said, there are at times a mirror effect where you're seeing one character interacting with another character through dimensions and that shifting back and forth of the camera kind of swinging over to this completely different time period. The set design looks good. The costuming is fantastic. The makeup's fantastic. It really captures that, what I think of, as the swinging 60s in London. So I can't ask for a better movie, to be honest with you. If I were to review Last Night in Soho, I would give it a nine and a half out of 10. Excellent film, one of the best films of 2021. Something that I think a lot of people are sleeping on. Maybe I could see how people would be frustrated with kind of the shifting of the storyline. It is a little back and forth, it changes a lot. There's a lot of jumping back and forth in time. There's a lot of twists and turns, especially in the third act. It keeps shifting back and forth what you think about the characters. But I think as you ride along, it's just a roller coaster of a movie that's fully enjoyable. I felt totally engrossed by it. I feel like it flew by the runtime, I think was perfect for it. I really enjoyed it. If you checked out last night in Soho, let me know what you think about it, because I haven't heard that many people talking about it. So leave those comments down below. Remember to like and subscribe, and see you guys next time.